For an ECU to be able to deliver exactly the right amount of fuel, it's critical for it to know how much air is entering the engine at any time. I'm Andre from the High Performance Academy and in this video we're going to talk about the different ways available to measure the amount of air entering the engine. Now one of the most popular methods, particularly in factory cars, is the use of a mass airflow sensor, often referred to as a MAF sensor. Now this sensor sits somewhere in the intake system to the car and it has the advantage of directly measuring the mass of air entering the engine. Now that's the key part that the ECU wants to know. Remember that it's supplying fuel to match the massive air entering the engine. So if it knows directly how much air is entering the engine, it's very easy for it to calculate the correct mass of fuel to supply in order to achieve a target air fuel ratio. Now, the problem is in the aftermarket, the mass airflow sensor actually presents a couple of issues for us. First of all, they're quite bulky. We physically need to fit them somewhere in the intake and that needs to be fitted somewhere in the engine bay. Today's modern engine bays are becoming more and more cramped and particularly when we start modifying the engine, perhaps adding a turbocharger or modifying the intake track, it can be difficult to find room for that mass airflow sensor to sit. Now the other problem with the mass airflow sensor is unsurprisingly they're calculated to measure the sort of airflow requirements for the factory engine. Obviously that works fine for the factory engine, but once we start heavily modifying the engine and producing more power, what that means is we've got more air entering the engine. And if we go too far, we can actually go off the scale of what the factory MAF sensor can read. Now of course there's fixes for that as well. We can fit the factory MAF sensor into a larger intake pipe, thereby changing its resolution or its measurement scale, or we could possibly fit a complete aftermarket sensor that's capable of measuring the amount of airflow we need for our new modified engine. In the aftermarket, however, it's much more common to do away with the mass airflow sensor entirely and use a system called speed density. Now, the speed density system uses a manifold air pressure sensor, often referred to as a MAP sensor, that measures the pressure inside the intake manifold. Then, using the ideal gas law, the ECU can calculate the mass of air entering the engine rather than directly measuring it. Now, for us in the aftermarket, this is a nice solution because the MAP sensor is small, it's easy to locate in the engine bay, and we can buy them with a, a huge variety of different measurement ranges. So we can easily pick a MAP sensor suitable for whatever manifold pressure we're expecting to see with our engine. The Toyota 86 behind me is fitted with a Sprintec supercharger kit and we're tuning this using the EcuTec reflash package which allows us to optimise and modify the tuning inside the factory ECU. Now because we're still inside the measurement scale of the factory MAF sensor, we're still using the MAF sensor for all of the ECU's load calculations. If you are tuning a factory ECU via a reflash method, it's going to be much more likely that the ECU will rely on a MAF sensor for its load input. However, if you're tuning an aftermarket ECU, much more likely to be using the speed density principle with a MAP sensor instead. If you are tuning using an aftermarket ECU, it's much more likely that you'll be using a MAP sensor for the load input. The only time we'd really keep a MAF sensor in the system is if class rules required us to do so. So there's a little bit of information on the various ways of measuring airflow into the engine. If you'd like to learn more, all of these topics and more are covered in detail in our EFI Tuning Fundamentals course. Check it out at hpacademy.com.